Yo, yo, what is up, guys? Fur here, and today we're going to be talking about who I think the strongest right hand or first mate, whatever you want to take it as. Now, we're going down the list of each first mate to see how their abilities work versatility, destructive capability, attack power, defense, durability, and all of that stuff. So, we're just going to analyze who would be the best in a fight, who is overall stronger. Obviously, we're not going to include Rayleigh because that guy is clearly above the rest. This is only going to be for the strongest Yonko commander, which is essentially the first mate. But yeah, let's get onto the list. Number one, we have have Marco. Now Marco is Whitebeard's right hand man and we could all say that he's a fan favorite in the One Piece community. I mean I have a whole channel dedicated to this guy, shout out to Marco the Phoenix. But all jokes aside, Marco has proven himself to be one of the most impressive commanders in any Yonko's crew given what we saw during the events of Marineford. But while Marco has his ups in terms of power and strength, he also has his downs as well. Now Marco has arguably one of the best zone fruits in the series and the only mythical type alongside former fleet Sengoku, a uh, former fleet Admiral Sengoku. Goku, which grants him the ability to turn into a phoenix and gain the ability of instant regeneration which makes it almost impossible to hurt marco the only known ways to bypass his fruit effects is by nerfing it with sea stone cuffs or maybe dousing the flames that makes him regenerate and personally i would say this is by far marco's greatest assets in terms of combat the ability to take on any blow and come back at 100 percent like nothing happened and this is why he could go up against the admirals without sustaining any lethal injuries except that one time he got sea stone cuffed by Vice Admiral Onigumo, but the fact of the matter is that no one can really hurt Marco. If an Akainu who was shown to have one of the most devastating abilities in One Piece was having a hard time and couldn't really hurt him because of his Phoenix regeneration, and the same thing applied for Kizaru when he used the light attack, which simply just passed through his body. Yes, in terms of how defensive this fruit is, I have it at the top of the Devil Fruit chain, and this is just based on its basic abilities alone. When we take things like Awakening into account, it might put him on a whole different level, but it was stated in an SPS that his his regeneration does have a limit so it's not like he can spam it all time now while marine fort isn't the best example of how strong marco is given that he only had brief clashes here and there and no actual fights one thing marco definitely lacked was offensive attack power now don't get me wrong his attacks were strong enough to send kizaru and aokiji flying however it did absolutely zero damage while he was up against the admirals all he did was really hold them back but he couldn't really hurt them kainu versus 15 commander speaks volumes on that whole situation Situation. Now, granted, the admirals having the power of Logia didn't really help either, as they are able to avoid hockey imbued attacks. And apart from his Devil Fruit power, we don't know the full extent of his hockey in terms of observation or ornament, or maybe even has conquerors. But we do know his ornament is strong enough to affect the Logia bodies of the admirals. But apart from his incredible defense and regen, nothing else is really exceptional. But I will say this about Marco: he's still one of the most impressive Yonko commander, as he was going up against the admirals. And there's still a big room for improvement in terms of how we perceive Marco as Wano is right up the corner and his reintroduction in the story and I think this would be a good time for Oda to show us the full extent of Marco's powers in terms of not only Devil Fruit power but hockey as well. More than likely he goes up against one of Kaido's calamities during the events of Wano but that's pretty much it for Marco. Number two we have Charlotte Katakuri one of Big Mom's top commanders and the strongest one at that. Now amongst all the commanders we have seen we know the most about his powers and abilities given that we just came out of, of almost a 20 chapter fight between him and luffy and this is why i currently have him as the strongest first mate till i see more from the others category has proven himself to be one of the most complete fighters in one piece the only person that can compete with him is doflamingo they all have three forms of hockey both are awakened and are extremely versatile with their abilities but the difference here is that category has high level armament you know the block mochi and advanced level observation which allows him to see into the future which is one of the most devastating abilities to have in one piece slow heavy fighters would be completely completely useless against Katakuri. People like Jack may not be able to get a single hit on Katakuri if they fight. Now there's only two ways to get around his future sight. One is either by attacking him from places his eyes cannot see, you know his blind spot, or having future sight yourself. If not, you would be at a massive disadvantage. Apart from his crazy observation, Katakuri's block mochi is strong enough to the point that it overwhelms Luffy's hockey in base form, but was also seen to hurt Luffy and Snake Man as well. And we also know Katakuri is an awakened, you know, Devil Fruit user, meaning he can turn his surroundings into mochi and manipulate it something he didn't use much in the fight katakuri is also a special paramecia whereas he has the same properties as a logia would and that is intangibility and in combination with his future side he's able to move his real body away from line of fire to avoid hockey attacks ever since the beginning of the fight between him and luffy luffy couldn't really hit katakuri and if not for the marianda we're not sure if luffy would have figured out the trick behind it katakuri is also versatile with his fruit having the ability to mold his mochi into any 
anything he wants as well as having the skill set to you know mimic other people's uh techniques after just seeing it just just like how he did with luffy's elephant gun and with that being said i think katakur is the most well-rounded yonko commander we've seen he excels in every aspects of combat except maybe his stamina and endurance i don't think he can last five days like jack but overall i have him as the strongest first mate for the time being till we see more from the others more unlikely it changes to marco during wano kuni but who knows number three we have ben beckman now we haven't seen much of him the only two times we saw him was you know during the food ship village you know with luffy and the bandits and at the climax of marine ford that was pretty much all we saw from him so in terms of what we know about his power is little to zero but we can speculate about what he may be capable of this is one of the first mates people have high expectations for and usually people have him as the strongest first mate with nothing really to base it off of except hype and portrayal now we all know about the ben beckman kizaru moment that happened in marine ford ben beckman pointed his gun at kizaru and kizaru raised his arm in the air and we all know kizaru is one of the fastest characters in the series if not the fastest i mean this guy is made of light particles now while this shows how strong ben beckman is potentially it's really vague because we know how much of a troll kizaru is he usually over exaggerate things people say in a trollish way but at the same time we know there's something there with ben beckman now apart from that we also know ben beckman is a marksman and seems to be a physical fighter and given what we know about shanks crew yeah, they have a thing about you know non devil fruit users so it's safe to say that this guy more than likely has an advanced form of ornament hockey or observation or even both at the same time and with the reveal of katakuri having king's hockey i think the only other commander to have conqueror's hockey as well would be ben beckman and i do think he's going to be very technical when it comes down to fights a lot like katakuri but to a whole new level but the ben beckman hype is real but i'm hoping we get to see something before their battle with blackbeard but that's pretty much it for ben beckman number four we have shilyu of the rain now i'll say this about shil shilyu has one of the most badass monikers in one piece and that's facts someone with a name like shilyu of the rain you know this guy is the real deal now shilyu is this captain of the second ship of the blackbeard pirates i'm more than likely the strongest commander as well you know van ogre and laffit may be up there as well and i guess as the monster trio of the blackbeard pirates now what we know about shilyu post time skip is little except the fact that he's a lot stronger you know being the right hand to the yonko he has to live up to that expectations and more than likely obtain a devil fruit power since we know blackbeard's you know going around taking you know the strongest fruits that he can get now pre time skip we do know shilyu was on magellan's level you know magellan being slightly stronger but the gap is very little now where i rank magellan is probably at least yonko commander level given how dangerous of a fighter he is to everyone you know poison you can't really go around poison that much in a fight really even ivankov one of you know dragon's top three commanders was defeated pre time skip so that says a lot about shilyu we also know that he's a swordsman and more likely is zoro's end game fight and ben beckman's matchup fight as well in terms of growth shilyu has a lot of potential based on a lot of things that was stated about him in the series and his portrayal and there's a couple of theories here and there saying that he takes the world's greatest title you know swordsman's title from mihawk which makes sense towards the idea of zoro fighting him and game now even though we haven't seen much of him i expect him to be you know specialized in like iron man given that he's a swordsman but a good twist would be him having a fruit power alongside with it something that would amplify his swordsmanship skills even more and that could be the contrast between him and zoro whereas he would do anything to become the world's strongest swordsman while zoro wants that title based on raw human skill but yeah shilyu i have him as the weakest right hand for now but more than likely he becomes the strongest later just like his captain blackbeard and finally we have the king calamity i know there's some of you there that don't believe in the jack you know jack queen king theory but i think jack is more than likely the weakest calamity given you know given the fact that we have this car thing with kaido's crew but i wouldn't be surprised if oda breaks our ankles once again now the king calamity we have nothing to base him off of no feats or anything but we can speculate about the information given to us about kaido's crew now more than likely he's going to have a zone as that's the thing in kaido's crew and i think it's going to be a mythical one at that being the first mate to someone like kaido it should be no surprise that this guy would have a rare power as well apart from that i think this could be a marco's matchup in wano you know mythical versus another mythical you know two mythical creatures going at it and it would make sense for this guy to specialize in ornament hockey we've seen the advanced version of uh observation hockey with big mom's first commander katakuri i think we should get the advanced ornament with kaido's first commander and given how zones fight it makes sense as to why they would specialize in ornament and in regards about what advanced ornament can do i made a whole theory about it and essentially what i said is that you can extend your aura out of your body and make it into different
different shapes sort of like a force field but yeah in terms of physicality this guy would be one of the strongest characters in terms of physical strength and i have him having the highest bounty for any commander in any yonkers crew given the nature of the calamities and how they torture and more than likely kill civilians but yeah the wano hype is real but anyways that's pretty much it for the video like the video if you liked it subscribe for more one piece content on this channel it is for you guys and i will see you folks later peace